Hello, I'm going to show you four different ways to connect the CVM8 to the Dieting EX. The CVM8 is an 8-channel CV to MIDI and I2C converter module. Um, MIDI, I2C and Select Bus all supported, which gives you plenty of ways to connect to things. So, first of all, um, we're going to use the one which involves least wiring, which is the Select Bus. So, in this scenario, the Dieting EX is connected to the Power Bus. The CVM8 is connected to the same power bus inside the case. Um, no other wires are required. However, we do need to move the jumper, which uh, is that's its factory setting. We need to move it to the two pins that say select bus, like so. There we go. So the jumper is on the two pins on the left where it says select bus. That means that output. Um, MIDI output 2 on the module is going to route into the select bus. Um, and the other thing we we'll want to do is select the right configuration. Now I'm going to be using this Tirana to output voltages for testing, which outputs voltages in the range of 0 to 10 volts. So the 0 to 10 volt range on the CVM8, obviously we could plug this into a computer and configure it um, completely flexibly, but if we're just going to use the factory settings, we want um, preset four, which the manual says is dip switches set to 1100. So I'll go uh, one, one, zero, zero. There we go. So first two switches are on, second two switches off. So let's put that in the case. Um, breaking one of my golden rules here, which is to always screw things into the case before turning them on. But we'll go with that for now. Right, power. CVM8 has its power on routine. And now if I connect a voltage from the Tirana, pop into input 8 there, start wiggling the knob. It's sending, so that the right to, uh, rightmost column of LEDs is transmission on MIDI 1 and MIDI 2, as it should be. Nothing's happening on the Disting EX. Now, the reason for that is that the Disting EX is on its default setting of not listening to the select bus at all. So in the settings, we want to find select bus function, and then we'll change that to only MIDI, which means it's gonna use the select bus as a MIDI input, not actually interpret it as select bus in any way, just to use it as a connection. So we'll do that. And then it should be receiving, and it, indeed it is. As I wiggle this knob, you see it's um, modifying that parameter. If I go into the MISC menu, uh, show MIDI history. There we go, that's the MIDI CCs coming in, CC14, uh, full range. Uh, if we wanted to change what that was mapped to, then that's where we use the mappings and we can do what we like. So let's uh, MIDI mappings. Let's say we wanted that to be, I don't know, um, let's say we wanted it to be bend range for some reason. Uh, we can actually use MIDI learn. So activate learn, turn the knob, and then CC14 is controlling the bend range. Um, sorry, uh, leave that. And then now controlling the bend range. From there. Um, so that's the first way to connect the two modules. So the uh, second way, which I'm going to do with the power off, is to connect the two modules directly through, um, through MIDI, rather than using the select bus. So um, I'm going to use DuPont cable, and on the Disting EX, I'm going to connect it to the MIDI header, like so. So that's on the Disting EX there. Uh, so I'm using Orange's pin one, which is the topmost pin. And then on the CVM8, I'm going to connect it directly to the MIDI pins, which is the first four. Now, because I'm connecting them directly, 
Obviously, I don't want to connect an output to an output. I want to connect an output to an input and an input to an output, which basically means I just turn the cable through 180 degrees and plug the cables in the reverse order. So if I plug these to the first four on the CVMA. So remember, orange was at the top on the disting, but on this one, blue is on the top. And then I will put them back in the case and they're going to start wobbling around, but we'll have to deal with that. Uh, turn it back on. Now, obviously, select bus is still connected, so I'm going to just turn that off. So we can prove we're not using that anymore. Select bus function disabled. Okay, so now if we connect our voltage and start wiggling it, there we go, we've got MIDI again. Now, the um, if we go to MISC, show MIDI history, there we go, that's our MIDI CCs. Now that's not using the select bus anymore, that's using this direct MIDI cable that we just plugged in. Otherwise, it's exactly the same is using the select bus. So that's method number two. Um, I plugged four cables in here for MIDI, bi-directional MIDI. Obviously, it's only sending from here to here. I only actually only needed one pair of cables in that particular um, scenario. But we'll go with the full, full four for now. So the next method is um, basically the same but using a MIDI breakout as well. So let's just kind of disconnect these cables. There. there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect both modules to the Expert Sleeper's Tiny MIDI breakout. So I'm going to pop the disting on the second pair. So I'm wiring these for um, type A MIDI connection, not that it really matters because it's going to be the same at both ends. Um, and the top one is going to be input, output, input, output. And um, these are basically wired exactly as they are in the tiny MIDI, tiny MIDI breakout um, web page, if you refer to that. So I've still got orange, yellow, green, blue on the disting which is going into the breakout. Then I'm going to do the same on the CVM8. So now, I, because I'm using the breakout, I don't want the cables flipped. I want output to output input, uh, and input to input. So I'm going to have orange on the top. Making this look harder than it is. There we go. Right, so that's my CVM8 connections now, orange, yellow, green, blue. And if I can persuade these modules to all go in the case, um, I might actually need to screw them in at this point because they're just going all over the place. Turn it back on. So this DEX CVM8 both connected to the breakout. Put our voltage into the CVM8 as before, wiggle the knob. It's sending, but nothing's happening. And that's because the modules aren't actually connected to each other. They're only connected to the breakout. So we'll need a MIDI cable, uh, which I have here. I still struggle to conceive of this as a MIDI cable, having grown up with 5-pin DIN, but there we go. That's what a MIDI cable looks like. So we'll go from the output of the CVM8 to the input of the listing EX. Wiggle the knob, and then we're back in business. We're receiving MIDI. So um, this looks like exactly what we had before, but with much many more wires. The advantage being, of course, that now it's super easy to repatch these into other modules if I wanted to 
connect either of them up to a computer. Now all I've got to do is plug my MIDI into these sockets. If I want to have another module, another Disting EX or something else, I could just have another pair of breakouts there. Um, speaking of another EX, of course, when we were using the select bus, um, because it just uses the back plane, you could have as many Disting EXs as you want all on the same bus and the select bus would talk to them all at the same time. But um, yeah, that's another thing. So the last thing we want to talk about is I2C. So uh, power off and we'll just take this apart. Right, so that's the MIDI breakout away. So I2C, again, we're going to use a um, DuPont cable. On the CVM8, we'll connect it to the I2C pins, which are here on the back. Uh, where are they? Are they? There they are. Let's try and focus on those. Uh, ground, SCL, SDA. So we'll go green for ground, blue, purple. And then we'll connect the other end to the Disting EX header, which is here. Again, ground, SCL, SDA, they're in the same order. And I've got the pull-ups engaged on the Disting EX on that switch. Um, right, where's my cable? Okay, so that's the Disting EX connected. Now, um, on the CVM8, there's also a pull-up switch, which is there, which is currently in its factory position, which is engaged. It's probably fine to leave both of them engaged, but I'm just going to dis disable that one, because really you only need one set of pull-ups on the bus, so that now looks like that. And I'm going to have to change the factory configuration because I don't want to reconfigure this on a computer. So I want to look up the factory configuration that does I2C, which is configuration 12. So on the dip switches, that's 1101. Dip switches, 1101. It's there. So there's my dip switches now. On, on, off, on. And that's all that plugged together. So power up. Plug in my voltage again. And now if I wiggle the knob, then we see it's transmitting I2C, which is fine. Um, and then on the Disting EX, we'll look at um, show I2C history. And we'll see it's getting a whole bunch of stuff coming through, which is nice. And then there we go. It's it's doing it. So just to remind us how we map I2C things, we want to go mappings, I2C mappings. And in this case, ID um, controller 8, 7, sorry, because it's not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 by default is mapping fine-tune as we saw it was doing if we uh, wanted to change that to something else then uh, what should we do what do we do before well, let's do gain since it's there so we just change that to id7 instead of that one we'll turn id that one to sorry we'll just disable that one so gain is now on id7 which is that one then there we go, we've got I2C control of gain. So there we go, that's four different ways you can connect to the CVM8 and the Disting EX, uh, all useful in different scenarios, I'm sure. So that's it, cheers.